Okay, so remember how I was talking about those little blemishes there that you see? See there from the glue? This is just a basic gray. Any gray will do right now until I decide um, what the finished color will be. This will be more of a shadow, an undertone shadow. In fact, I can probably paint this by hand if I really want to with washes. That's how I did the uh, one on Glover Road. See the top, how I roughed it up with sandpaper, so it's got a roof kind of, almost a, uh, a membrane type, tar papery type surface. Just really rough sand, coarse sandpaper, 60 grit. Okay, so the office building. So I have this basic uh, dark sea gray that I based it out with, dark sea gray, which Essentially, like I mentioned before, it's just like a primer. All the Tamiya, I'll, I'll just say it one more time, all the XF 50, well, it doesn't matter. XF flat, which means flat. It's just primer. That's all it is. It's a, it's a high end, high quality pigment primer. Okay, so there's no need to primer the model uh, beforehand because it's already got gray primer on it. So I'm going to just hit this now with sky gray, which is this XF 19 which is a nice lighter, good tone to go over top of the XF54 dark sea gray. And then I'm gonna follow it with royal light gray, XF80. Normally I would just add white to the dark sea gray and just graduate it down, but it's probably easier for those that are just wondering if they wanna learn how to do some toning with gray. It's just three colors is really all you need, okay? So that's what I'm gonna use here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint the top lightly with some light passes. I like just very light layer at first, okay? Keep your airbrush moving. After a while, you'll stop at the end of each pass. I don't always do that, but it's kind of like a golf swing. There's a basic fundamentals to the golf swing, but then you develop your own style, right? Once you know the fundamentals. Okay, so you can see how it's lightening up there. It's starting to add a little more depth there, see? The doors that get painted later, I'll mask them off. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to overspray with some XF80 Royal Light Gray.
I don't want to cover the whole model. I want those variations, right? Because those are going to play with the light and just the overall illusion of light and shadow. Okay, that's what you want. And notice how I didn't spray underneath, because underneath all these vents and so on, and these eye beams and even the railings, but these will get touched up with black though, or a, or a very dark, dark green black. Uh, are you going to have shadow like you see here with the light? You can see, well, we paint those in in a subtle way to enhance the miniature because of the physics of light on a small object. We overemphasize light and shadow on the model and that's what makes them pop, okay? Okay, so here's the platform or the porch and what I did was I just did a, a, just a quick mass job here and I'm going to take some really dark gray or even black, uh, which I don't normally I don't normally use black, but um, once in a while I make an exception when it's very minimal. This has got some white in it, so it'll get a little bit darker. I like m more of a dark gray than, than I do black. Because of the light, you see that it shows black.
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my airbrush to do some dry brushing, or in a sense, um, what I would normally do with an enamel-based uh, or oil-based paint is, is dry brush. It's much easier to do. Acrylic dry brushing can really kill a brush fast, and it dries so fast it doesn't stay wet long enough to really give a good effect. So what I do is I use the airbrush to do the dry brush, like the final fade. Uh, you can see in this building I did a little bit here, but I'll show you how I do it. I'll do some at the back here. And you can see how it's quite grimy. There's some little micro flood marks. So I want to tone those down a bit and just restore some of the original color back just to help add a little bit of illusion of depth and light and shadow and a little, just a little bit of uh, weathering. Okay, uh, even if it's a bit more uh, than the uh, prototype, but the prototype does have some weathering on it. So I'll show you what I'm, how I'm going to do that. And what I'm using is the very light base coat. It's almost like a pale duck egg blue. I just took some white and I added some of the blue from the door there into here. And you'll notice that I like to use the same colors, uh, like a palette of certain colors and spread them around the model or the area. I'm very much like, I like to move all the colors that I use on my palette on the canvas. Okay. And in this case, I've used a lot of this. In fact, I use some of this on the container, the 40 foot container, which I will also use to highlight as well. Okay. And one more thing I want to just tell you, here's a tip for you. Uh, there's an adjustment right here on the back of your airbrush. So this is very thin, this paint now, remember, it's like ink, right? So there's an adjustment right here, and if you turn this in, it makes this spring stiffer. Like, it actually makes it more difficult to pull the trigger back, okay? Which controls your paint, and that's what you want when you're doing thin paint, and you want micro amounts. You want the tip to lock off the paint, uh, more reliably and you want it a little bit tougher to pull back because the more resistance you have the finer the line or the finer the amount of paint you can control okay Notice how I went over the doors too, ever so slightly. See that? How they faded? Okay, so these flood marks, you see them there? We're going to cover those up very light with a very light application. Okay, so here's the final mask and paint uh, on the yard office. I decided to mask off the rubber seal on the window line, even though I, I um, painted the inside black so it shows, so in case it does show through, uh, it'll still look like there's a rubber seal there, but I decided that now that it's all painted, I'll just throw some, to me, a masking around it, and instead of round corners, they're just 
straight sort of cut off like you won't really notice anyway so I'll just take a little bit of black Okay, that'll do it. Okay, so let's have a look. Once again, acrylic, you can, you can unmask immediately. So let's peel off all this tape and see what the window looks like. Peel off the inside. Mm, might have got a little bit of leakage there, looks like maybe through the tape, but that I can clean up with isopropyl. Okay, there we go. There's the flush window. It looks like there was a little bit of a bleed line, very subtle, like a thread thin on the inside, but you can't really notice it. But I'll be able to remove that since it's uh, Tamiya with uh, a little bit of a Q-tip with a bit of isopropyl alcohol will remove Tamiya like butter. So I'll just clean that up. And uh, that looks pretty good. You can see on the angle there that I'll put a little Venetian blind in behind there out of paper. You can see where I had a little bit of a bleed there, see? But that, I can get that. That's on the inside. That'll clean up. So what I'll do is I'll make a little Venetian blind out of paper, just like the window, and then have one sort of partly open, just like on the prototype.